Welcome back to the channel guys, hope everyone's doing well. So in the last video I was talking about these little off-grid messenger devices and the system that they run on which is called Meshtastic. Now the video has raised quite a bit of excitement around this stuff and I'm not surprised because it's an absolutely amazing system. And I know quite a few of you, because I've been looking in the comments section, have got these devices and hopefully you've got them up and running on Meshtastic. It's not that difficult. But for those of you who have got these devices now and are like, oh I don't know what to do now, how do I install Meshtastic? This video is for you, it's going to be a complete explanation about how you put one of these things together and get Meshtastic on it and get it up and running. So let's get started. So to start off with, we're gonna talk about the device itself and the one that you need to get if you haven't got one of these already. The one I'm using is the Helltech Lower 32 version three. The version three is very important because the version two and the version one aren't as stable. So I found this device to be very good and the stability has been fine. I've got about six or seven of these up and running at the moment. Now I've seen some people in the comment section saying, oh, I can't get the one from the link that you, you sent um, on Amazon. Basically the link that I gave you from Amazon took you to this page here, which and I can see they've now sold out. Um, basically the only difference between this and all of the other ones that are on um, Amazon are this one is definitely a version 3 but it comes with the sort of 3D printed case. So basically as long as you can find the Helltech Lower 32 version 3 device, whether it's got a case or not, it doesn't matter, you will be good to go. So just a simple little Amazon search here and it brings up this one um, which is a V3 and this is absolutely fine. Now the other thing you need to be aware of is if you're in the EU, you need the 868 megahertz one. I believe the 868 and 915 megahertz ones are the same, um, but there is a 433 megahertz megahertz one. Don't get that one unless you want to do other experiments because the majority of people using these are on 868 megahertz. So that is a good one to get. Now you can get these boards a lot cheaper from AliExpress. You'll be waiting a while for the shipping to come from China and all of that. But if you want to get these quickly then Amazon or eBay you'll be able to get them from a local seller. And if you weren't already aware there's lots of other devices that can run Meshtastic, not just this one. There's other ones with keyboards um, and GPS including the original device that kind of started this whole craze, the Lily go T-Beam. So if we head over to the Meshtastic website at meshtastic.org and then we go to docs and the top menu here and then getting started, we'll end up at this page here. Don't worry if it looks intimidating, it's not. This is probably one of the most well-written getting started and kind of installation guides um, for getting set up with Meshtastic that I've ever seen. It's incredibly easy to read. Basically if you can set up a ring doorbell or something like that you should have no problem here. Well other than the fact that your ring doorbell can be hacked but we won't talk about that now. So basically to get this device up and running there's effectively three steps. Um, the first one is install serial drivers. Now you don't have to do this if you're on the Mac, It'll, it should just work straight away. Um, with Windows you will need to install um, some serial drivers so we'll just, just take a look at that. What you want is this one here. So the device we're using is a Helltech Lower 32 device so it uses ESP32 drivers and these are just, it's just a serial driver. So on Windows you're just going to choose this one here get that installed on Mac OS. It does actually have some drivers listed for Mac OS. Um, from my experience, I've just plugged it in and it's worked, but if you do need to install them, they are there. And then Linux, obviously, if you're using Linux, then you probably know what you're doing with that anyway. These drivers just basically allow your computer to talk to your Helltech board um, over a USB lead. And using a USB lead is how you're gonna install the Meshtastic software on it. So now you've got your drivers installed, you're gonna take the little board out of the box and you're going to connect it to the computer with a USB-C lead. Now, it's very important that you use a proper USB-C lead for this because some USB-C leads are just designed for charging, they're not designed for data um, as well. So if you run into problems, make sure your USB lead is one that is designed for data. So we're going to plug this in. When you first plug it in, it boots up its own software. It's got some, some sort of like Helltech software on there, um, which is designed for lower, but it's not what we want on there. So that you can see it's going into like a kind of Wi-Fi configuration. So the next step is to erase that and put Meshtastic on it. Exciting. Now at this point it's probably a good idea to put the antenna on so you don't damage the radio chip when it fires up. Um, basically that just fits on there with this little kind of UFL connector. They're easy to do, just be really careful. Um, give it a firm press and it should just snap on. They can be a little bit fiddly because they're so small but maybe use a magnifying glass if you have trouble seeing it. So the next step is to flash the firmware. So we're going to hit flash firmware on the left there and we want ESP32 device again. 
click on that. Now the great thing here is the web developers have made a brilliant web-based installer um, and it works with Chrome or Edge on, uh, on Windows. But basically all you've got to do is click on this web-based installer here, click on that and then go to this one here, click on there and then you'll end up on this page. So you can select your device here which is a Helltech version 3. You might have noticed on my board it says 3.1 but that doesn't matter. So next up we're going to select the firmware version. Now I've actually been using the alpha um, firmware which is the late, very latest one here. So we're going to click that um, then we're going to go to update device here and we're going to change that to wipe and reinstall device. So those are your three settings there. Once you hit connect here, you get a little dialogue come up. So what you want to do is click on that one, which is basically your USB serial device. Um, you know, if you've incorrectly installed the drivers, this will pop up. I'm on the Mac here, so it's doing it this way. And you can see the device there, USB serial 0001. You can hit connect. So then, basically, you get this little thing come up and it says install Helltech V3. And you can do that and you can see all data on the device will be erased. You can hit install and that will install the firmware on the device. And that's pretty much it. So at the moment, nothing on the device, and you'll just get a progress bar that just goes up um, to tell you that it's installing. So you can just sit back and wait for that to happen. So it's all done, and the device is gonna reboot. And when it reboots, it's got Meshtastic on there. Fantastic. So we'll just let that start up. And the next process is going to be configuring it. And you can do that with the smartphone app. So now's actually a pretty good time to put your board in your case. If you've got one of the ones with the cases, um, then you can basically just install your little board into the case that comes with it. Um, and the antenna fits in here. I've had a few questions about this. The little antenna that you get with these fits perfectly in that kind of section there. And from my experience, these little antennas actually do work quite well. Not as good as an external one. Um, and we'll cover those in a separate video. But... Um, they do actually work quite well. So you can see here, it all fits nicely. And the top part of this case just snaps over the top and it's snug, you don't even have to glue it or anything like that. It just stays stays attached really nice. So it's actually a really nice case. There are better cases out there, but you probably have to 3D print those. Um, my 3D printer is not up and running at the moment, but I've seen some pretty amazing cases which I'm gonna get involved in soon. So yeah, watch this space. But for now, we're gonna use this one. Also, the thing about this case, it doesn't really have a space for a battery. So I've got an external battery on here which doesn't come with the kits. It's just a small little um, 600 milliamp hour battery. And that seems to power this device for like, I don't know, what, six or eight hours. Under here, there's a little connector. If I grab another board, you can see what I mean. So that little connector there is for the battery. If you plug in any little one cell LiPo battery into there, it will also get charged by power coming into the USB um, port as well. So it's a pretty fully well thought out system this. Anyway, I've just stuck that little battery at the back for the time being until I can get another case where it will be actually inside. So onto the app then, we're doing this on an Android smartphone at the moment. Um, you just type in Meshtastic into Play Store, or wherever you get your apps, you can sideload them as well. Um, and then you just install this Meshtastic app here. Um, then once you've done that, obviously you can open it. Now in my app, you can actually see I've pre-configured something. So all you do to configure a new one is actually just press the little plus button down the side. So you can see what's happened, it's done a Bluetooth scan and it's found this new one here. So we're gonna hit that there and it's gonna ask you for the pairing request, which you can see on the Meshtastic node itself, 382720. So we're gonna type that in, 382720, and then we're gonna pair it with this phone. And then you can see at the top where it says your name, it says Meshtastic 1ADC. And you can, if we look closely on the device itself, there it is, it's that one, 1ADC. Now, this is unconfigured at the moment, so it's not gonna be doing anything, it's not gonna be transmitting anything or doing anything. So what you have to first do is set the region. The region we wanna set is EU868, so we're gonna hit that. Once you've done that, then it reboots, and then comes back up again. And you can see here, it's already found the mesh to connect to, which is pretty cool. So that is pretty much it. I mean, on from that, you can change, you know, the user details, you can change your name here, um, you know, make a friendly name for it um, so that people can identify you. And you can also say you're a licensed amateur radio operator. Um, I'm not sure exactly what the feature of that is um, at this stage, but um, there's other things in here as well. So right down the bottom of the app here, I'm leaving all the settings as standard, and it's by default set to 869.525 megahertz. And that is the frequency that basically everyone will be on 
unless you change it. So I'd advise just keeping it on 869525 because um, you are allowed to run up to 500 milliwatts in this part of the ISM band and it's totally legal, everything else is fine. These devices put out about 100 milliwatts. I'm gonna do some power output tests in another video, um, but I have seen it around 140 milliwatts on, on external power, so that's pretty cool. And then from here, you can go to like the long, fast, um, kind of talk group, really. It's, it's basically just like a channel, um, and then you can say hi there, and then basically that will go out to pretty much anyone that's kind of, you know, in the vicinity. Uh, this is non-private, this is just basically just like a free, a free channel that everyone can use. If you want to do private messaging, you can go back to the nodes list. You can just hold on one of the uh, stations you want to um, send a message to and then go hi there or who. <laughs> And that was actually ping through on this device because that is my base station. It can get a bit confusing if you've got loads of these in the same place. <laughs> so in terms of a quick start, that's kind of it really. That'll get you going. Um, for Apple users, there's an iPhone app. Um, it's available in the Apple App Store. Um, it's slightly different to the, to the Android one shown here. I don't think it's quite as slick. And it will do pretty much everything that the Android app would do. Although I haven't found a way to trace root yet, like ping different nodes. Anyway, there's a lot of advanced settings which you can change as you get more familiar with this system, but this should get you going. You don't need to worry about setting up repeaters or anything to forward your message across the mesh. It happens automatically. So basically you can just set up a few devices exactly the same way as I've shown here, um, spread them out, put them at like friends' houses, and providing they're in radio range, they'll automatically connect to each other and forward your messages across. So you don't have to worry about configuring a repeater or anything else. It, it's just all done automatically. It's so cool. So I hope this helps you configure your first Mesh-tastic node. Who knows, maybe we'll make contact over the Mesh. That would be quite cool. It's by no means a definitive guide. I'd highly recommend going to the Mesh-tastic website and reading all their documentation there. As I say, it's so well written and it's very, very easy to understand, even for people with short attention spans like me. Anyway guys, catch you next time.